Welcome in everybody to Betting Pros. It's me, Joey P, Joe P. Zapia, and today Scott Bogman and I are going to start looking at this week's bowl games. That's right, part one of the bowl action spectacular. The next two weeks, we're going to continue to bring you coverage here on Betting Pros of all the bowl games, and Scott Bogman is going to break down this first grouping that's going to be the latest that you'll see over this weekend, and then obviously as we get closer to the national championship games and a whole lot more going on, we'll get you up to speed with everything you need to know there. So we're not going anywhere. Don't worry. We just took that one week off, and here we are right back ready to go, and we also gave out some hardware while we were off. Scott Bogman won the Heisman, so congratulations Thank to you, you. Boggs. Uh, I know it's a About Cinderella time. story. And yeah, well deserved. Well deserved is all I can. You say. know, it's not uh, often that a 38 year old guy that never played college football wins the Heisman, but when it happens, you like to celebrate it. So, yeah. uh, you know, now obviously Bryce Young won the Heisman. I, I think, to me, this just kind of says we'll never have a defensive player win the Heisman again. You know, mm. I mean, if if Aiden Hutchinson didn't win it this year. Um, I just don't think it's ever. Gonna if you happen. had a vote, who would you have voted for? Just Probably curiosity. Aiden Hutchinson. You know, Will Anderson is very good too. Um, uh, but Bryce Young was great. Don't don't get don't get me wrong. I think he was very deserving uh, of the Heisman Trophy. But um, this was one of the years where, as the writers and as the voting public, I think you could have said, well, this year no one led wire to wire. There wasn't a big offensive uh, debate here. Let's give it to the defensive kid. Finally, you know. Um, mm -hmm. and it didn't happen. You know, Charles Woodson was the last one and yeah. probably going to be, that's a long time ago. So yeah, <laughs> that was decades now right. ago, which is yeah. kind of shocking. You know, it had it not been for that final game. I wonder if it would have been different too. You know, I that, think it would have been. I yeah. I, I think it probably, but he was outstanding. He was so good. I told you, you know, yeah. we we were we came on here. We talked about it last time. I like just how brilliant he was in that game. You and I talked about it. Uh, I mean, it was the best game of the year. He's played the best game of his career. And it was at the best yeah. time and the most important, the most crucial. And uh, so good for Bryce Young. Congratulations to him. Bogman, a bridesmaid, never a bride. But uh, <laughs> we'll continue on and let's start with some of these bowl games. And as we go through them, you're going to say, what the hell did they name that bowl game after this thing or whatever it is? So that's the fun of the bowl games is not only digging into the games, but Bogman's also giving me a couple guys to maybe to keep an eye on that might be playing in the NFL. So let's just kick things off here and let's start with the Bahamas Bowl, which is where I'm going right after all football season's going <laughs> over. As soon as it's done, I am going to the Bahamas. Check it. Toledo, 10-point favorites versus Middle Tennessee State. The number is 50 and a half. So Bogman, walk us through the Bahamas Bowl. Well, Brian Kobach is the leader of the offense for Toledo, but uh, Middle Tennessee State uh, hasn't given up a 100-yard rusher in seven straight games here. So that's just interesting to kind of note. Daquan Finn has been great in the passing game, and Toledo is well-balanced. Uh, they're number one in the nation with only six turnovers, but Middle Tennessee is also number one in the nation with 31 takeaways. So th something is going to have to break in this game. Uh, for Middle Tennessee quarterback Nick Vadiato uh, was named to the All Conference USA freshman team for Middle Tennessee, but I think they are a little too one-dimensional. Middle Tennessee in this game, they pass re really well. They don't run the ball particularly well. Uh, Toledo has shut down the pass this year. They're ranked 18th in the nation against the pass. I have Toledo uh, by 10 in this game. I'll also take the under because I just don't know how much Middle Tennessee is going to score, and I think that uh, Toledo is going to control the clock here. So a couple prospects to watch on Toledo. Obviously, Brian Kobach, a running back. Very, very talented. Definitely has a possibility to get drafted. Uh, they also have a safety named Tyson Anderson and a guard named Bryce Harris. And for Middle Tennessee, Reed Blankenship, probably the only guy. Uh, a couple other guys just listed among various sites. DQ Thomas, and linebacker. Gregory Great, the safety, and Jaron Pierce, the wide receiver. So uh, this one should be a fun one, but I got Middle Tennessee, or I got, excuse me, Toledo. I'll lay the points, and I will take the under. All right. If Friday you're in love, then the Cure Bowl is for you. Coastal Carolina, 10 and a half point favorites versus Northern Illinois. The over under is 63 and a half. Uh, Bogman, I'm not sure if you were an emo kid at all, if you had any of those moments not in really high school, yet. but uh, if you did, I mean, I, I would love, I think that's what they should do. Like, all of these should be themed, I feel like. Like, the Bahamas Bowl should be themed. Like, all the jerseys should look like, you know, like island shirts. I think, like, the Cure Bowl. Everybody should just be in all black and they can't tell anybody apart. We'll just have one team in very black and one team sort of black. 
and that's it. And everyone no. can just have very pale yeah. faces. It, it's it's the sister bowl of the Smiths bowl. So, oh, you know. the Smiths bowl uh, is so good, dude. It's playing down the street. Uh, I think it's more for, you know, uh, curing diseases. But okay, <laughs> I you know. know. Uh, I, way to make me feel like a jerk on this show, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're trying to bring some humor <laughs> and some comedy here. We've been doing this for I don't know how many weeks. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I can't. Hey, I can't give you a little hard time. Come on, the sick kids. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I can't break you. You know what? So come on, yeah, go get the shine can. box. All right. You can. Uh, I'm just teasing. <laughs> but uh, look, uh, uh, if NIU has a shot at this mm. game, they got a control clock. They got it. They got a control clock here, which is something they've done this year. They're uh, top ten in time of possession. But the issue to me here is that Coastal Carolina is thirteenth in time of possession, so they also control the clock. And their defense is way better than Northern Illinois. Uh, Coastal Carolina is l- allowing less than three touchdowns per game at twenty points, which is nineteenth in the country. I think Coastal win this one, most likely going away. But if you're in a uh, you know confidence level. Uh, this is this as far as double digit uh, favorites here. This one will be low because NIU just shows up like we didn't expect them to win the Mac. They showed up and won the Mac championship. Right. So I, I just think that NIU um, is a little bit underrated. There are a bunch of prospects to watch in this game. Coastal Carolina has Isaiah Likely, the tight end, Grayson McCall, the corner, and Jeffrey Gunter, an edge rusher. Uh, NIU, I don't know if they'll have anybody drafted. Clint Rakovich, uh, pretty solid fullback marquez cox a good defensive tackle but also um i forgot to mention it and you and i forgot to say it at the top of the show we have a bull pick'em group that i have tweeted out a couple times and we have a nice prize a desmond ritter autographed jersey from pristine auction is on the line so if you win that you can win that autographed desmond ritter jersey so please check that out i will retweet that again today at bogman sports as you're listening to this so you can see that and potentially uh you know throw your hat in the ring and see if you can win it it is free 99 zero dollars to sign up so go ahead and take a crack at it and if i uh, register and i win i will donate it to the cure not the band I will oh, donate. Whatever, I didn't. I didn't think you would there. donate a Desmond Ritter jersey because you're uh, a Desmond Ritter. You no, know, you know me. I, you know, I do a lot of the charity stuff. All joking aside, of course. So if I win, I'm not going to. Yeah, the Black it. Book always has the charity week. Yeah, oh, yeah. Of the course. Black. I mean, we do so much for St. Jude's and all these other things. So now that people don't think I'm an awful human being completely, let's go to the next one here. <laughs> Just mostly, uh, the next one mostly. here. If you want to have your dinner at four o'clock in the afternoon and get home in time for the Boca Raton Bowl. Appalachian State, Montgomery versus Western Kentucky. 67 and a half is the over-under. Boggs looks like a lot of scoring in this one. Can this one live up to that point total? I think it can, and I, I think it can because I'm going to take Western Kentucky in this game. Their offense is humming right now, and uh, they will be more ready to fire up in this game, and uh, I think they're going to overwhelm App State's defense. That has played uh, you know, only one top-10 passing offense in Miami, and they lost that game. WKU averages 110 yards more per game passing than Miami, who's at 10th. Western Kentucky w- never will make anything easy, though, because their defense is horrific. They rank 113th in the nation against the pass, so they're not going to make it easy on you. I'm going to take WKU here. Uh, they've got uh, – I also I'll, – I'll take the – <laughs> I'll take the over because I All think right. WKU gets most of it, but I think App State's going to score because WKU can't stop anybody. So, um, for as far as prospects go, D'Angelo Malone, a defensive end for WKU, Bailey Zappi, their quarterback, Jarris Stearns, are wide out, and Mitchell Tinsley all uh are, are sp- specifically on offense you're gonna see zappy and stearns and tinsley they'll probably both have 20 uh 10 catches a piece so um you'll see them for app state they're better on defense uh sean jolly their corner definitely gonna get drafted uh, Dem- uh demetrius taylor has a shot Corey sutton the wide receiver has a shot and ryan huff the safety also can be watched as far as you know just looking for some nfl prospects but i'll go with wku and take the over in the boca raton ball all right, next one's the New Mexico Bowl. Fresno State, 11.5-point favorites versus UTEP. 50.5 is the number on this one. So Fresno State, pretty big favorites here. Do you think they can cover this 11.5? Yeah, and they're only getting, on the betting side, they're just slightly over 50% of the cash. And I think that's because, you know, uh, their coach, DeBeer, left to go to Washington, and running back coach Lee Marks will coach this game for Fresno State. Um, also, Jake Hayner. Had, was going to transfer from Fresno State back to Washington, where he originally transferred from. 
but then he's going to have some eligibility issues. So he decided to save Fresno State. I don't know if he's going to play in this game or not. I think he is, but I haven't heard definitively he will be the quarterback for Fresno State. So I think they win um, it, it, because any halfway competent offense has just torn through UTEP this season. But I don't think that they'll cover. I think this is, you know, UTEP's first game since 2014. I think they're going to come to play. They're good on offense. Uh, their defense is not great, though. So I'm going to take UTEP uh, plus the 11 and a half here. But I think the over is the real play because it's only 15 and a half. So mm-hmm. I just think UTEP comes to play in a bowl game. They haven't been to one in seven seasons here. So uh, I think that they cover this. I don't think they'll win. But uh, there's some decent prospects in this game, too. Fresno State's got Ronnie Rivers, the running back, Jalen Cropper, the whiteout, and Aaron Mosby is an edge rusher. And for UTEP, not a lot that's probably going to make it to the NFL here. But Jacob Cowling, the wide receiver for them, has a shot. So uh, those are some prospects to watch in the New Mexico Bowl. All right, let's switch gears to the Independence Bowl. Number 13 ranked BYU, seven-point favorites against UAB. 54.5 is the number on this one, Boggs. Now, UAB... A pretty good showing last time we saw them uh, fell short, obviously, against Alabama. But uh, BYU is the ranked team here. So any room for an upset or is this a BYU win? I think this is a BYU beatdown of UAB here. BYU only has two losses and they have a very balanced offensive attack. 25th in passing, 41st in rushing. UAB is great against the run, but average at stopping the pass. So I think BYU will have to pass the ball a little bit more. Um, The defense is a strength for UAB, but they have some weird losses. They lost to Rice. They lost to UTEP, who, like I said, most competent teams just ripped through uh, UTEP in the back half of the season. I think BYU will be too much for them. I'll lay the points. I'll also take the under. I don't, just don't think UAB has a ton going for them on offense. So um, some prospects to watch in this game. Running back Tyler Algier, uh, probably a day three pick for somebody. Uh, the running back out of BYU. They have a, a guard named James Empey who could get drafted. Isaac Rex or tight end as a shot. Um, Alex Wright, the edge rusher for UAB. Uh, is in there, and their tight end, Garrett Prince, is a good one to watch as well. All right. The rate of interest will be high in the Lending Tree Bowl. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, so good. Liberty, oh. nine and a half point favorites versus Eastern Michigan. The total in this game is 58 and a half. Pretty good sized total there. So, Liberty, obviously, the heavy favorites in the Lending Tree Bowl. Come on, Box. That was a good one. Don't, don't I mean, you that know that good. dad jokes crush my soul. Like, I know, I just... but. That was a pretty good one. On the scale, that was pretty good. Uh, Yeah, look, it's fine. You know, but but, the rate of interest will be high. It was pretty good. There's just not, see, you're never going to get a good response from me because they're all kind of the same. Like, they're all kind of, you know, smart and and quick and and they have a, all right, I guess that's funny, but you're never going to get a laugh out of me on those. On the scale, on the scale of dad joke, I think that was like an eight and a half. Like, that was pretty good. That was almost right. legitimately funny. I mean, I don't think I, I'm not a dad, so I don't have a, a <clears throat> well. right to vote or judge these dad jokes. So, <laughs> you know. All right, so let's get back to Liberty <laughs> in Eastern Michigan. What do you think here about this one? I think this game all depends on what Malik Willis shows up for Liberty. Their quarterback who's definitely going to get drafted in the first round. He's got a ton of upside here, but it's pretty clear. In their wins, in the seven wins for Liberty, Willis has 17 passing touchdowns and three interceptions. In the five losses, he has seven touchdowns and nine interceptions. So I think with the extended time off that Liberty will make some easy throws for Malik. This is what he's going to be practicing and running uh, for them. And Eastern Michigan is a good story. They're, you know, obviously bull qualified and all that stuff. But I just I don't think they're going to have enough. They're way too inconsistent. So I think that Malik Willis and Liberty uh, run the table here um, uh, in this game. And I think it's just this Malik needs this for his draft stock, too. If he plays a bad game against Eastern Michigan, then I think he's going to start slipping to the back end of the first, maybe even the second. Um, So but I I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to have a huge game and he's going to bump his draft stock up. Obviously, he's a prospect to watch here. They also have an edge rusher named Jarrell Johnson at Liberty Eastern Michigan. Probably nobody is going to get drafted, but Terry Myrick, their linebacker, has a shot, and Hassan Baden has a shot for them as well, their wide receiver. So um, Malik Willis is the main guy to watch here, though. Oregon State and Utah State will battle to the death for the love of Jimmy Kimmel in the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl. No, I'm not making that up, boys and girls. Yeah. That is a real thing. Okay, now this is new, right? 
I've never heard of this before. Am I this wrong? is the first year of the steeped in tradition, Jimmy Kimmel, L.A. Bowl, <laughs> yeah, right? Uh -huh. um, and <laughs> uh, I, I also I didn't know that we we're going to get a Jimmy Kimmel Bowl. So I went on and read about it. And he said something like, um, ever since I can remember, which uh, ever since I was 52 years old, which was last year, uh, <laughs> I wanted a, a bowl game named after me. So um we couldn't get a price. They didn't disclose how much he paid to have this bowl game named after him. But I, one of the bowls, I believe, was around $350,000. So somewhere in that neighborhood. I mean, he's got to be getting paid way more than that. Uh, I don't know, man, but that's pretty amazing. Like, uh, I think we should start campaigns <laughs> to name them after, like, old has-been celebrities and things like that. that. Now we're now we're cooking somewhere. Like, okay. All you right. know, like old sitcom stars we haven't thought about in a long time, something like that. The, yeah. How about the O.J. Simpson? I didn't do it, bowl. You think that one will, will <laughs> less, do it? Get less there? popular in Los Angeles. Less popular, yeah. Less, in Los Angeles, less popular. <laughs> well, let's stick to the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl. <laughs> Oregon State is <laughs> Oregon State is seven and a half point favorites in this one. Utah State, the underdogs. The number is sixty-seven and a half. So walk us through, box. Look, I think this game is going to play close. I think there are awful mismatches for both offenses. Oregon State had the 12th ranked rushing offense this year, and Utah State was 86 against the run. They let up over 160 yards uh, per game through their doors. Utah State was 15th in the nation in passing offense. Oregon State was 87th against the pass, giving up 266 yards per game, and they put no pressure on the quarterback. Oregon uh, State doesn't 16 sacks on the year. That's more barely more than one a game. 117th ranked in sacks. So with it close like this, I'm going to give I'm going to take the points. I'm going to take Utah State plus the points here um, with both mismatches being on offense. I will also take the over 67 and a half, which means this should be a very fun game to watch. Oregon State has one of the best offensive lines in the country, obviously, with their 12th ranked uh, rushing attack. So they do have a couple of linemen. Brandon Kipper, the offensive tackle, and the guard, Nathan Eldridge, uh, could both be drafted. Avery Roberts, a linebacker for them. Omar Spates, the good, uh, good linebackers, obviously not blitzing linebackers, but good linebackers for them. Utah State, uh, Devin Tompkins is, I don't know why he's not getting more draft buzz, probably because the wide receiver class here is so deep, but he's just, when he gets the ball in his hands, he makes plays. So watch for Devin Tompkins on Utah State. Uh, offensive tackle Alfred Edwards also getting a little buzz and Justin Rice, their linebacker, a little buzz as well. All right. New Orleans Bowl, 23rd ranked Louisiana, five point favorites versus Marshall. 55 and a half is the number. So is uh, Louisiana here five points, a comfortable number for you? I think it is, uh, but I'm surprised the public is betting Marshall just a little bit over 50%. And my guy, Nick uh, Allen and CFB Winning Edge also uh, in on Marshall. So I was a little surprised by that because to me, I think this game is going to be a little bit of a dredge. I think that Louisiana will run all over Marshall. I think that's a big mismatch in this game. And I think sometimes those mismatches in bowl games, when uh, a team has, you know, a month to prepare, they get even more exposed than they normally would. So uh, for L Louisiana, they're uh, averaging, um, uh, they, they uh, get about 200 yards per game. Uh, and and uh, Marshall's giving up 190. So Marshall passes the ball well. They're 12th ranked passing offense, uh, led by Grant Wells, their quarterback. But Louisiana has only given up 300 yards passing uh, one time this year to Troy, and they still won that game. So this, to me, is a, a Louisiana cruise. I think they win this one. I also love the under here because I just don't know how much Marshall is going to put on the board against Louisiana. So um, I got Louisiana kind of in a walk here. They got a couple good prospects. Uh, offensive tackle Max Mitchell, definitely their best one. They have a interior offensive lineman, Osiris Torrance, probably going to get drafted too. Chris Smith, the running back, is up in the air. Percy Butler is safety, maybe. Uh, for Marshall, uh, Stephen Gilmore, their corner, uh, probably going to get drafted, and Xavier Gaines is a good tight end too, probably borderline to get drafted, but he is fun to watch. Next on the docket is Myrtle Beach Bowl. Tulsa, nine and a half point favorites. Pretty big number there versus Old Dominion. The over-under is 52, so Tulsa almost up at 10. This one's nine and a half right now. Uh, your thoughts on this one? This game is going to be fun because these two teams love to give the ball away. This could be a turnover <laughs> fest. Uh, they gave up. Uh, they both gave it up 20 times or more this season. Tulsa, the fourth most in college football, 24 uh, giveaways. ODU, only three behind them with 21. 
And Old Dominion got on a roll at the end of the season. They won five straight to become uh, bowl eligible and five of six starts with quarterback Hayden Wolf. Uh, DJ Mack was their quarterback. They went to Hayden Wolf and they started winning games. Tulsa looks just too strong for ODU, though, in my opinion. As uh, uh, long as they don't turn the ball over more times than Old Dominion, which could happen, but I think they could win this one pretty convincingly. Tulsa ran for 297 yards against a CFP, a playoff team, Cincy, uh, in a one-score loss. But uh, And they put up just under 200 against Tulane, over 200 against Temple, and um, they beat SMU to end their season. ODU is improving, but they only beat one eligible bowl, one bowl eligible team in Middle Tennessee State this season uh, during that five-game win streak. So give me Tulsa and give me the over. A lot of points, I think, in this game. Uh, four Tulsa players to watch on the offensive line, Chris Paul, the tackle, Tyler Smith, the guard, um, and then on Old Dominion, Zach Kuntz, the tight end, and Jordan Young, a linebacker. Or probably neither guy gets drafted, but they should be fun to watch in this game at least. Before we break down the uh, teams in the potato bowl, the potato is a very versatile thing, Bog. So I'm just curious, what right. is your favorite style of potato and how? It's well, started? you know, moving back to Texas here, Joe. There's a thing mm. called the chop baker. I don't know if you know what that oh, is, but what? it is a what in the world a, is this? It's a potato uh -huh. where you put all the fixins in, right? The uh -huh. sour cream, the butter, the chives, the cheese, right. all that stuff. And then you put barbecue right on top of that SOB, Ooh. right? So that is, I ate one of those two days ago. So um, my, my buddy told me this place down the street from me, Rudy's, is uh, is uh, really good, and my doctor hates it. So you know, I'll say <laughs> What's that. it called, a chopper? Chop baker. Chop, Chop baker. baker. Yeah. Wow. I, Just, uh, you know, uh, if you have like a Jason's Deli or something, uh, Texas Bud. So well, th I, there's I all can, kinds I of different do that, though. It. I mean, we do a lot of pulled pork and stuff like that. At the pizza oh, yeah. pia house. I think I can certainly make that work. But that's a heck of an idea. I'm going like to find that. a picture and send it to you. as we're Well, I want to see that for sure. Maybe <laughs> we'll, we'll tweet that later on. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's a good answer right there. I was not prepared for that. And now oh, I'm yeah. hungry. I mean, um, I've got food takes, Joe. You know, you don't. I am. Hey, you don't. Look, get, you and I have food takes always. It's always you don't get food, to Joe. look like I do without enjoying some food. So, <laughs> you know, why? I like you know. I don't have like pictures of my family saved in my phone, but I got one of this potato here. So I'll send this <laughs> right here to you. <laughs> So check out your phone. You can see uh, it there. All right. I'm going to take a look at it as you are describing Wyoming three-point favorites versus Kent State, 59 and a half. I'm sorry, no, just 59 is the over-under of this one. Pardon me. Wyoming three-point favorites of this one versus Kent State. This one's very close here. Yes. So do you believe that uh, Kent State has a shot here? I I, I hate this game. Uh, I Okay, so it's a coin flip. I think this might be one of the purest coin flips that we have here. Both sides match up well against each other. Kent State has a great offense, averaging over 30 points per game, but Wyoming is allowing just 22 points per game. Wyoming is bad on offense, averaging just over 23 points per game, but Kent State is allowing over 30. They're 119th in the country in scoring defense. So I think the big factor here will be can Kent State run the ball? In the six losses for Wyoming, they're averaging 181 rushing yards allowed. Um, and Kent State is fourth in the nation in averaging over 240 yards per game rushing. So I think this matchup is one of the, like I said, purest coin flips here. And I do think that it will be a blowout one way or the other. Because if Kent State can't run, their defense is not going to stop Wyoming. Even though Wyoming doesn't put a, up a lot of points, they'll be able to against Kent State. But if if Kent State can run, they'll control clock and it'll force what the Wyoming offense into mistakes. So I, I think it's going to be a blot either way. I just don't know which way. So um, I'll take Kent State uh, and uh, the points here, the plus three. Uh, but if this is a confidence game like we're playing, I'm going to have it uh, fairly low. Um, as far as Kent State goes, Dustin Crum maybe gets drafted their quarterback. Uh, probably have to look pretty good here and have um, you know a good combine and stuff for Wyoming. Chad Muma, their linebacker, definitely getting drafted. Xavier Valade, the running back, probably, and Logan Harris, a guard, is uh, a possibility as well. All right, Frisco Bowl, UTSA, two and a half point favorites first. 24th ranked San Diego State, 50 is the number on this one. Boggs is the wrong team favorite here. I don't think so. Uh, I, this is, it's a good question to ask because this is, this is definitely the best game we've talked about up to this point, mm -hmm. UTSA versus San Diego state, UTSA isn't playing their best ball, uh, not on the back half of the season. They didn't, but, 
Um, they they uh, played close against Southern Miss. Uh, they were a 10-point winner as 33-point favorites. They straight up lost to North Texas. But I still think that they're a better overall squad than San Diego State. The Aztecs play ball control, running in great defense and field position. Their best weapon is their punter, Matt Arazia, who just won the Ray Guy Award and is going to get drafted, probably mm-hmm. in the fourth round. By the way, this punter, right. he He's is the outstanding. Of the, yeah, I've seen him. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's the, yeah, that's the punter of note for sure. Right, right, exactly. You know, one comes around every four or five years. This is the the punter of note uh, for this half decade here. So, uh, <laughs> but I think uh, UTSA got back to clicking on offense during the conference USA championship, where they beat Western Kentucky and outscored them forty eight to forty one. I think so. Uh, not that you know they have a good defense at Western Kentucky, but UTSA had been kind of puttering on offense before winning the conference USA. They put up 49 points, 550 yards. So I think UTSA will just have a little bit too much on offense. Um, So I'm going to roll with them and lay the two and a half. Uh, Not a lot of pro prospects here for UTSA. Mm -hmm. Good team, but sincere McCormick is a maybe. Uh, at running back, uh, Tariq Wool in their corner could get drafted. Cameron Thomas for San Diego State, their edge rusher, definitely going to get drafted, and so is Matarazia, but probably nobody else on that team. All right, last one here. Army, I'm sure, will try to run the ball into the ground here in the Armed Forces Bowl against mm-hmm. Missouri. Army is three-and-a-half-point favorites against Missouri, and 58 is the over-under. Boggs, I, I would tend towards the under in this game, but you're the expert. So what are your thoughts on Army and Missouri? I mean, I this game boils down to if Missouri can stop Army's rushing attack at all because that's all they got, right? right. Uh, 61 rushes a game. They're not going to be throwing it. Uh, and Missouri ranks 124. <laughs> Reminds me of that Bills-Patriots game from last Monday. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Uh, you know, I don't think we'll get that weather in the Armed Forces Bowl here. You like but... leather helmets. This is the ball game for you, folks. <laughs> uh, Missouri ranks 124th in the country uh, against the run, allowing 230 yards per game on the ground. Army second in the nation, 288 yards per game on the ground. This is the miss. This mismatch is all I need. So I'm going to take Army. I think they'll control the clock, which is going to pressure Missouri to make plays quickly, and it could force them into some uncharacteristic uh, mistakes here. They only turn the ball over once per game. 12 turnovers the whole year for Missouri, which is outstanding, especially playing in the SEC. And, you know, this number two being 124th in the nation against the run, playing a lot of SEC teams with just stronger offensive lines. So um, I think that makes it seem a little bit better than it might be. But um, I'm going to take Army and their rushing attack here. The Army has no pro prospects, you know, like they usually right. don't. But Missouri, um, Caleb Evans, their corner, Ali Green, a corner, Kobe Whiteside, an offensive tackle, and Tyler Beatty, their uh, star running back, all could be drafted. All right, make sure you head over to bettingpros.com to look at all the consensus lines from all the different betting houses, and you can make your wagers there. And, of course, check out all of Scott Bogman's great work at bettingpros.com as well. In the meantime, you can subscribe wherever you get your podcast to Betting Pros because we got a lot of great content on the NFL side and the college football side. Before you know it, baseball will be back, I think. So we got a lot of stuff going on here over on Betting Pros, and this is just part one of our bowl series. Uh, maybe when we come back next week, there will be a bowl game named after me. I cannot confirm or deny this. We shall see what happens as time goes on. But Bogman and I will be back again regardless to do it all again for the next group of bowl games, which have some bigger teams for sure in them. So very exciting stuff going on there. So have a great holiday uh, for those of you who are listening and hope you enjoy everything going on here with Betting Pros. And hopefully your uh, football seasons have gone very well. And once again, that'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For Scott Bogman, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.